In this video, I want to show you how to understand a stock's beta in the context of regression analysis. So remember that beta is the expected percentage change in a security's return, given that there's a 1% change in the market index. Okay, so if a company has a beta of two and the market index were to go up uh, by 1%, you'd expect a 2% increase in that stock's return. Now, you can calculate the beta of any stock by saying, okay, what's the covariance of that stock's return? So that'd be a returns for firm I, okay, so let's say Walmart, and then you could take the returns of the, the market index, so let's say the returns for the S&P 500, take the covariance of that and divide it by the variance of the returns of the market index. That will give you the beta for firm I, and again, let's say it's Walmart or something, so you'd have the beta for Walmart. But another way of thinking about it, instead of just saying, okay, the covariance divided by the variance, you can also think about beta as a coefficient in a regression that's that, uh, that I'll show you. I'll, I'll go through it, uh, results of a regression. So you can think about it as the slope of the line when you actually plot a security's excess returns against the market's excess returns. And when I say excess returns, I mean returns over and above the risk-free rate. So let me show you an example to kind of point out what I mean by these, these words. So let's say that we have monthly returns for six months. So we've got monthly returns for a company called Bubsy, and then we've got a market index. So let's just say it's the S&P 500. And we've got for six months, we don't have a lot of data points here, just six observations, but we have different returns. Say like, for example, in March, Bubsy had a return of 21%, and the market index returned 13%. And then we're also going to assume that the risk-free rate of return is 3%. So investors at any point in time, without bearing any risk at all, they could get a return of 3%. That's going to become important because, again, I said we're plotting the excess returns of, of the uh, security against the excess returns of the market. So we're going to have to d subtract 3% from each of these before we perform our, our regression analysis. This is actually the model that we're going to be performing for our regression analysis. So we've got the return of the uh, Bubsy. That's a uh, stock I in this case. I could be any company. It could be Walmart. could be uh, whatever, Costco. But in this case, it's Bubsy. So the return of Bubsy minus the return of the risk-free rate. So we're going to take 11% minus 3%. So that's going to be 8%. And then 17 minus 3% is going to be 14% and so forth. And we're also going to do that. So, so we've got here our excess return. So we've got Bubsy is 11% minus 3 is 8. 17 minus 3 is 14 and so forth. We're also going to do that for the market index here because we've got, okay, here's our excess return. So this is our excess return for Bubsy. Okay, so this is the excess for Bubsy. And then we've got here, we've got, the market return minus the risk-free rate. So we call this, this is the market premium or the excess return of the market. Okay, so we've got the excess return of the market, the amount the market earns over and above the risk-free rate. And so this beta here, if you're familiar with regression analysis at all, this is just your standard beta coefficient. This is just a coefficient estimate that says, okay, when this goes up by one, what happens to the dependent variable? Okay, this is our dependent variable. I don't want to get too much into statistics in case you haven't had it before, but this is our independent variable, okay, is the excess uh, returns on the market. So if you're using Stata or Excel or anything like that, if it's asking you for the X variable in Excel, the independent variable, it will refer to as the X variable, and then the dependent variable on the left-hand side, it will refer to as the Y variable. Okay, but basically here is our dependent variable on this left-hand side, and then we've got our in independent variable. Our independent variable is the excess returns of the market, which again, so we got 8%, subtract 3, that's 5. So our excess return for the market, 5, 7, 10. Well, all we're doing is just taking each one here and subtracting 3. So that gives us an excess return for the market. And then the same for Bubsy. Just subtract 3, the risk-free rate, that gives us an excess return for Bubsy. So our excess return for the market, again, this is our independent variable, and then we've got our dependent variable. So we're trying to say, in, in, in layperson's terms, how do changes in this variable uh, lead to predict changes in this variable? How do changes in the excess return of the market predict changes in the excess return of Bubsy? Okay, and so when we, we take 
this independent variable, we input these values. So let's say you were using Excel, you input these values when you're doing re regression, and, and then you input these variables as your dependent variable, and then it's gonna give you a coefficient estimate for this beta sub i. Okay, so this beta is basically a coefficient estimate. It's a weight. If you think about like, let's say you've taken matrix algebra or whatever, but you think about it as a weight, and it's saying, okay, if there's a one unit increase in the independent variable, in this, what is the predicted increase in this? Okay, so that's that's really all beta is. And then this here is alpha, that's the intercept. We think about a regression line, we're gonna plot a line. And then so here, where it intersects with the y-axis, that's alpha. We'll come back to, we'll talk about alpha in another video. And then we've got here, this epsilon, that's the error term or residual. Don't don't worry about that for right now, Let, let's just focus in on beta. Okay, so I went and, I, my, purpose here isn't to show you how to run regressions and so forth I can make another video on that but these are the the results I got I just used Excel but again you can use SPSS something like that and so the coefficient the, the coefficient estimate for beta so for our independent variable here so this this our beta is 1.85 okay and there's a bunch of other digits and stuff but let's just stick with 1.85 so what does that mean when we say the beta is 1.85 that means if there is a one unit increase in our independent variable, there is a 1.85 increase in our dependent variable. So that means that Bubsy's stock uh, returns are very sensitive to the market returns. Let's say that the beta was like 0.1 or something like that. That would be saying, wow, if the markets have a really high return, if they do really well or really poorly, Bubsy isn't affected much. But that's not the case. We don't have a small beta we have a, a decent sized beta here so if there's a one percent increase in the market return we would expect there be a 1.185 percent increase in bubsy's stock return okay now we can also think about things like you know the p-value and that gives us a measure of statistical significance we actually have very high statistical significance here uh, so that suggests that there's a very strong relationship and you can also get this thing called r square uh, which Excel tells you, and in any statistical software package will tell you when you run a regression. Uh, and it's basically saying that there's more than 99% of the variation in the dependent variable, which is, in this case is Bubsy's excess returns, is being explained by our independent variable. Here we just have one independent variable. So in other words, in, in layperson's terms, this is saying, look, Bubsy's returns, Bubsy's, Bubsy's stock returns are very strongly related to the market's returns, okay? And it's such that Bubsy's return is very sensitive. So it's almost double. When the market goes up, so then Bubsy, Bubsy stock goes up almost by twice. And if the market goes down, Bubsy's go down even more. So if there's a 1% decrease, then we have a 1.85% decrease in Bubsy stock. And this relationship is, is very significant. 